Hello everyone. Welcome back to Enlightened Words Save Souls. Now here today I am going to give you part three of my five series. There are two parts to this part three. Today we are only going to do one. This is about the birth of Jesus and how he came about. Please write down the scriptures so that you can read them and have them for your own studies. These are short, short versions of what I am giving you today. This is not a whole sermon. That's why I'm asking you to write down the scriptures and read them for your own self and for your own studies. Before I go further, here's a little word of prayer. The Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day that you have made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Lord, I pray that every heart and ears and minds and souls and spirits are open to hear what I am giving them today that you have put in my heart. Heavenly Father, this is for whoever that's willing to receive and whoever wants to take heed or wants to know, even for the curious of hearts. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word when I return to your void, and your word is true and everlasting, and it will prevail. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for this opportunity that you had given me to do so in jesus name amen now before i get into the scripture there was a prophecy that was told by a prophet isaiah in the old testament of jesus being born of a woman that's a virgin it says in isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 that the lord himself would give you a sign the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and we will call him Emmanuel. Prophets were the ones that the Lord revealed certain things to, to give people hope for the Messiah coming, which is Jesus Christ. Now, just to ensure you, when a true prophet or prophetess of our Heavenly Father speaks to you, it will come to pass, maybe not right then and there, but it will come to pass further up in the present or in the future. So we are going to look at Matthew, Chapter 1, verse 18 through 24, in the NIV version. And it says, This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage, until she gave birth to a son, and gave him the name Jesus. Now as we read the scripture, it told us that Mary was pledged to marry Joseph. She was a virgin when she was found pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Now in a Jewish custom, I know back in those days, but I don't know about now, if there was a woman found pregnant out of wedlock, meaning no husband, no marriage, she would have been stoned to death. And that's why I believe the angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream and told him not to put her away because she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, but for him to marry her. The angel of the Lord also informed Joseph that the baby that Mary's conceiving is the savior for his people from their sins. So as you heard, Joseph took heed to the word of the Lord and married Mary. Joseph did not consummate their marriage. Consummate means making the marriage or relationship complete by having sexual intercourse. Now Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, the time of evil King Herod reign. There were Magi meaning wise men. There was three of them. They came to Bethlehem looking for the king of the Jews that was born, which was Jesus Christ. The star arose when he was born. 
and they had to follow that star to go and worship him. When King Herod heard another king has been born, it disturbed him. So he asked around the people, chief priests and teachers of the law, and he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. And the people told him in Bethlehem, Judea, as the prophet has wrote. So he called on to the Magi, the three wise men, in secret to go search for the child. And as soon as they find him, inform him so that he could worship him. But in the king Herod's heart, he didn't want to worship him. He wanted to kill baby Jesus. So the three wise men went to go look for baby Jesus as they followed the star. They found him, and they saw the child with Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him, and they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When the Lord appeared unto the three wise men in a dream, and told them to go a different route home, and they did. And when they left, the Lord appeared to Joseph, and told them to take Mary and Jesus out of town into Egypt, and stay because King Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So when King Herod found out that the three wise men outwitted him, he went ahead and sent a command for all the infant to two years old baby boys to be killed. Then after King Herod died, the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, Take the child and the mother to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So in Matthew, if you follow me there, Matthew chapter 2, verse 21, it says, So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in the town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said to the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Now I'm quite sure everybody always wanted to know what happened between then and the time he was 30 years old before he starts ministering the gospel to the people, healing the sick, making the blind seen, and so forth. If you follow me to Luke chapter 2 verse 41 through 52, it reads, Every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple court sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astounded. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. I believe at this point that after they found him, he was very young. He still had to learn the ways of being obedient and listen to the parents and to grow up in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And I believe that's why he was not a peer. He did not appear until his time for him to appear at the age of 30. Now that is all that I have for you today. That is part one. Part two, please stand by for a continuation of Jesus' birth. Now the references to the scriptures I'm going to give you is Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 24. Matthew chapter 2, you can read the whole chapter. And then Luke chapter 2, verse 41 through 52 of what I just read to you. And there's many more. You can also read it all through the four synoptic gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
the reason why it's called synoptic because they all had the same story but some of them was a little bit more deeper than the other so it is really good to read the four gospels start from there and you learn about the birth of jesus and jesus himself and what he has taught so until next time please have a blessed and wonderful wonderful friday night and stay tuned again for part two see you later